Hello friends, in this video we are going to see about how to perform chi-square test. This video explains about manual calculation of chi-square test. Before going to the chi-square test calculation, we need to understand these four basic background knowledge for better understanding of chi-square test. First one is about the type of variables, where we have two types of variables. Variable are nothing but the attribute of the individual, which differs from one individual to other individual. Basically, each and every single question in a research will become a variable or some questions combined together make one variable say for example weight may be one single variable or if you calculate BMA out of weight and height that also become a variable so variable varies between individuals in this point we need to understand there are two types of variables categorical and numerical you can also know the fact that categorical can be again divided into nominal and ordinal where nominal means it's just a name example all your gender blood group all will become a nominal variable ordinal means the variables follow the rank order even though they are categorical they have a rank order for example mild moderate severe anemia will be a severe anemia will be a categorical variable on the other hand numerical variable can be again divided into two types that is discrete and continuous discrete means the whole number and continuous means there will be decimals on the other hand numerical variables can be again divided into interval and ratio the example for ratio scale is weight if you are not getting the types of variables clearly just for the chi-square calculation you need to remember that there are two types of variables categorical and numerical and we are going to use this chi-square test for two categories that is the purpose of chi-square test is to compare between two categorical variables or to study the test of association between two categorical variables. That is the purpose of this test. For example, I have told gender and blood group is a categorical variable. So when we are studying association between gender and blood grouping, then you can use chi-square test as a test of association. That is the second important background knowledge which you need to understand for computing chi-square test. The third important point is you need to understand about the hypothesis that there are two hypotheses available in research that is one is the null hypothesis null means nothing it says that there is no association between these two variables on the other hand alternate hypothesis or the research hypothesis says there is a relationship between these two categorical variables the fourth one is the type of errors we have two types of errors in research that is alpha error and beta error we need to understand the fact that that in research we have this null hypothesis which says there is no relationship in reality this may be either true or false there are two possibilities for this it may be either true or false on the other hand our study result it can either accept it or reject it so when we make the possibilities there are four possibilities that is we can accept when the null hypothesis is true that is a true positive result on the other hand we have true negatives that is we reject the null hypothesis when it is actually false for both this situation they are not errors that is true positives and true negatives we will be happy with the study results that the null hypothesis and our study results are syncing with the reality on the other hand we have two types of errors that is when the null hypothesis is actually true but you still reject it that is you are rejecting the null hypothesis when it is actually true that is an error that error is called as alpha error the second type of error that is type 2 error or beta error is the false negatives accept the null hypothesis when it is actually false so you can remember this by a mnemonic called ART that is alpha error is rejecting the null hypothesis when it is actually true the reverse is the beta error or type 2 error alpha error is type 1 error beta error is type 2 error is accepting the null hypothesis when it is false and you should remember the fact that both these places we are dealing with null hypothesis and we never deal with the alternate hypothesis and why do we know this types of errors in chi-square test calculation is the inverse of this beta error is called as the power of the study the probability of committing the alpha error is called as p-value of the study to understand p-value we should know about the errors and p-value is nothing but the probability of committing this alpha error to expand p-value is nothing but the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is actually true so we need to understand these four important points that is the type of variables we have categorical and numerical and the purpose of chi-square test is to test for association between two categorical variables and we have two hypotheses that is null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis or research hypothesis and we have two types of errors the probability of committing this alpha error is called as 
p value with this knowledge we move on to chi square test calculation as we told earlier chi square test is used for testing association between two categories or two proportions so we have given two categories that is one pass or fail is a category and male and female is a category so we are going to compare whether there is any association between gender and exam results so we have got the results like this we are going to apply this chi square test for this purpose now we need to understand chi square test has four steps number one is we need to state the hypothesis that is we have two hypothesis that is alternate or research hypothesis and null hypothesis alternate hypothesis or research hypothesis says that there is a relationship between two variables on the other hand null hypothesis says that there is no relationship then the second step that is the lengthiest and difficult step of chi square test so we are going to see this in detail that is we need to calculate the chi square test value calculation of expected cells of the each cell and chi square value will be calculated so the expected value of each cell will be calculated by multiplying row total into column total divided by grand total so that is the formula for getting this expected value i'll let you know how it is so this this was the table which was given we are going to study the association between the gender and the exam results so we are going to calculate the expected cell values so what we get here is the observed value and expected value is calculated by multiplying the column total into row total divided by grand total so we get like this so for this first cell alone the expected value is 88.5 i would advise you to put up a table for this where we have this serial number 1 2 3 and 4 so here we put up the observed values here first is first is observed value 83 27 78 and 12 then we calculate the expected value for the first cell it is 88.55 so then we calculate the observed minus expected then we calculate the observed minus expected the whole square then we calculate the observed minus expected whole square divided by expected so here in this case observed minus expected will be 5.55 then we need to calculate the 5.55 whole square then we need to divide it with the expected value that is here it is 5.55 whole square divided by 88.55 so we need to do this for all the cells we need to total or sum this up what we get here is the sigma observed minus expected the whole square divided by expected so that is the chi square value so I, i repeat the chi square value is given by the formula sigma observed minus expected the whole square divided by expected this is the most lengthier and difficult step in calculating the chi square value so chi square value is given by this formula so i would advise you to put up a table for this we need to put up the observed value whatever in the table here we need to calculate the expected value which is given by row total into column total divided by grand total so with that formula we need to calculate the expected value then observed minus expected then observed minus expected the whole square then observed minus expected the whole square divided by expected then we need to sum up all these values we will get the chi square value that is sigma observed minus expected divided by expected value now then we move on to the third step that is the calculating the degree of freedom degree of freedom is given by column minus 1 into row minus 1 that is we have two column here so minus 1 into row minus 1 that is 2 minus 1 so 1 into 1 is equal to 1 so degree of freedom here in this 2 bar 2 table is 1 most commonly for examination purpose you will get only 2 bar 2 table so you have you can remember the degree of freedom as 1 and you can remember this formula if suppose you get 3 bar 2 table then 3 minus 1 into 2 minus 1 so you will get the degree of freedom as 2 but in exams you will get only 2 bar 2 table calculation then the fourth important step is interpreting the probability value using the probability table this is the probability table this is the table of chi square test or the probability value so where you can see the degree of freedom which is increasing from 1 to 10 here so you need not look at down so you can look at only the degree of freedom 1 in the row it is the p value this is 0.50 this is 0.10 this is 0.05 we all know 0.05 is a critical point for significance 
so below which we say there is a significant association above which we say there is no significant association so this point is very critical and for this point 0 5 level the chi square value is 3.84 if you carefully look at the chi square value increases as the p value decreases that is 3.84 5.41 0.05 and 0.2 if you get the chi square value greater than 3.84 your p value will be less than 0.05 so that is the sentence provided here that is for two bar two table that is degree of freedom 1 the critical value of p value that is less than 0.05 the test value should be greater than 3.84 now let me go back to this original calculation where if you if you calculate this you will get the chi square value as 3.98 so this 3.98 is greater than 3.84 so how to interpret this is there is a significant association between gender and the exam results and if you want to go one one step ahead that you need to look at the percentages the high percentage of pass is among females the pass percentage among females is significantly higher when compared to the males so i repeat to understand the chi square test you need to understand four important points that is first the types of variables there are two types categorical and numerical and the purpose of the chi square test is to study the association between two categorical variables and we have two hypotheses that is null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis we have two types of errors the alpha error and beta error the p value is nothing but the probability of committing this alpha error rejecting the null hypothesis when it is actually true so p value is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is actually true so that is the background knowledge you needed for calculating the chi square test and what are all the steps in calculating the chi square test is there are four steps that is we need to state the hypothesis there are two hypotheses alternate and null hypothesis and calculate the chi square test value chi square test value will be calculated by calculating the expected value which is given by the formula row total into column total divided by grand total so after calculating the expected value chi square value is given by the formula sigma observed minus expected the whole square divided by expected then we have to calculate the degree of freedom for two bar two table the degree of freedom will be 2 minus 1 into 2 minus 1 is equal to 1 so then we need to look at the probability table we need to understand the fact that when the chi square value is more than 3.84 the p value will be less than 0 0.05 for degree of freedom of 1 after this we need to provide the interpretation whether the p value is significant or not based on this chi square value in manual calculation we may not get the exact p value but if we are doing with online calculators our software such as spss you will get the exact p value that is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is actually true even though chi square calculation is a little lengthy and difficult why it is included in ug curriculum is that when you are calculating this chi square test you will be able to understand many parameters which is related to research such as the types of variables p values etc thanks for watching this video if you like this video please share it to your friends if you haven't subscribed to the channel please subscribe